We'll go ahead and call our meeting to order. Did all of you have a chance to read the July 25th minutes? No, I have a copy here. Can I say that because I did not get a chance? All right. Let's just give you a few minutes to go over those. Oh. Yeah, no, I was here. Going on. I think this was... Okay, is there a motion to approve the minutes for July 25th? Okay, second. Yeah, yeah, yes. All right, that's yes. approved. We'll go on to park assessment reports. Okay. So, like we said uh, in our first meeting, these park assessments are going to be used, um, utilized to help. Um, assist us in 
bring new features or new ideas to the parks and also maybe looking at some current features that maybe you would like to remove maybe if they pose a, a safety hazard or um, they're just not fitting in the area um, and it would be better to find somewhere else. Um, so you were asked to do some assessments. Um, I would like to take some of those recommendations so that way we can start actually implementing you know, what's possible. So if there's any um, recommendations that you have found that you'd like to see utilized in these parks, please let me know, I can write them down. And then hopefully by next meeting, most of those things would already be Okay. Yeah, I, I think that uh, Calvin Thomas Marlowe Memorial Garden. Earl Memorial Garden, I think that would be a great added benefit for that area. Uh, you don't have to do a hardscape itself for a walkway, you can do a natural walkway. Um, that way, like mulch walkway or rock, whichever, but that way people can walk through and put some colorful plants that are permanent, um, three sisters or Fountain, the purple fountain grasses, make it nice and colorful, something that old tracks and butterflies, um, very, make it more inviting, so it kind of goes in with the name of the park. Yeah. I think that's a nice idea. And those type of plants are also the maintenance as well. Um, they're, you know, what's the word, they're native to this area. You can use a lot of the tropical plants that you see out on some of our local, like some of the HOAs um, out around town, the Barbugium and stuff. Like yeah. those are, they've got the, they're calling tractor tire yeah. plants, and you can, um, they're nice and waxy green. Yeah. So they don't bloom, but they still have that green color. They do bloom. Um, they're ready to bloom. They have oh, the, the yellow. The daisy like bloom. They have the yellow, yellow sprigs. I like them. Yeah. There's different variety of those too. And deer don't really like them. I like the no. firefly. Oh, yeah, very spots, yeah. Society garlic is like a border plant for a walkway, maybe. Also, deer don't like society garlic, so that would eliminate them coming in there to devil. Oh. Hmm. They just have a split rail made of concrete. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a nice idea. Did anybody see anything with Wilson Park? Any safety concerns or? I didn't see any safety concerns. The only thing that I would like to see is, you know, from the bluff, there being a, a direct sign. I'm saying this incorrectly, a direct line of sight you know, to the right, to the left, and, and maybe, and, and I know that there's a disagreement with neighbors possibly yeah. about, you know, cutting or bushes down, roofs down, whatever. Yeah. But there's probably, I mean, there's, there's... I didn't see a problem, you know, with what I had in mind, you know, cutting more of the, you know, the, the bushes down, because over here, they're cutting down. So is it in is it for like a line of sight type? Line of sight, you know, you're sitting there and the bushes and stuff have grown up here on the side and you know, right in front of the park yeah. and, and grown up over here. And I was thinking it'd, it'd be nice to how about a splash pad? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> but no, the 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 two parks uh I did notice there's concrete seating at the yeah. Calvin Thomas. I'm fine with that. Um, there's a lady, I won't mention her name. She might think I'm picking on her, but she, I believe if I, my, my memory serves me, she was the catalyst for changing from concrete to wood at seating at the you know benches mm -hmm. at the small park at Bay and Church. Yeah. Um, of course, it, you know, the concrete is way, way lower maintenance. Um, uh, and there are some very nice long benches at uh, Wilson Park. Yeah, those are our composite style benches. Mm -hmm. We 
we utilize that or we're kind of transitioning to that a little bit more just because it's it looks like a nice wooden bench until you get up close to it. Um, but it lasts a lot longer. It has like a 20 to 30 year shelf life right. to maintain it. Um, the only thing you really have to worry about, obviously, is just it will damage it if it runs into it, they break the brackets off. But and it doesn't really, have slivers. No, it, 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 was, it, yeah, and um, it's easier, like if there's graffiti or anything like that, it's easier to maintain and remove and stuff um, without damaging anything. But the only thing really I would say the downside that it takes a while is the fading and coloring and stuff. But the good thing with those is you can just buy new slides and bolt it and put it back together. It's brand new. So um, we're, we're kind of transitioning to that for certain parks that it's very hard to find new style of concrete and just tables thing. We have to go almost all the way up to Florence to get them because that's the vendor that we use. So we only get them every maybe five to six years, if that, as soon as we start getting low on stock, but they don't break as much. If the new the benches and the waterfront park around the circle palms mm -hmm. right there were those those weren't hundred percent wood right there. I want to say because I remember it. I remember most of that furniture originally was teak. Yeah, it was originally teak, and then I know the swings is what tiger wood. Is the teak sliver? Do you get slivers from the teak? It depends. Like it depends, I guess, on the sun exposure. With teak, teak is kind of finicky. Um, it fades really quick. Um, it depends also. Yeah. So we try to get on the cycle where um, every year and a half, every two years, we kind of bring it back in, sand it back down. The last time we did it, there were some that were kind of went down to splintering, and um, but for the most part, it fades. Same tact. Yeah. But it's just, it's a fading issue. Okay. Because it'll look good for a couple months, but then as soon as it sits out, it's not, like it's it's not even a year, it won't even last a year. Okay. Because even the, the swings that were done, I believe before even a year, go back to fading. Okay. Any anything else? I just want to make sure I got. The Memorial Garden, natural walkways, low maintenance, our food um, three sisters, mm -hmm. and then um, society gardens, some natural walkways kind of blend in. And then um, Wilson gave us the bluff, a um, lot of sites, uh, seeing a wave, there's a wave, maybe we can direction for folks that shape it up. Nice part. Neighbors are happy, but we're also happy as well. Um, and then, I would say I would, I would say if you do a natural walkway, you would probably want to have some sort of edging, yeah. Because um, if it rains and stuff, if you put mulch, yeah. whatever, that's gonna wash out. So you would probably want to have some edging in there just to support it. While we're talking about parks, do you have the list similar to this of all the parks? Yes, we we do have. Them. Um, when I get back to the office, I can email that to everybody. Yeah, I think it'd be good if you guys had a list of you know, parks, the city, groups, so. parks, playgrounds, open spaces. It's an it's an old one, so you know. Kind of like that. Familiar with many of these very well. <laughs> All right, moving right along, three ordinance recommended changes. So I know that we spoke last time that we've, well, you guys have been kind of working with planning as they're going through the ordinances. Right. Working along with that. Um, I know previous group, uh, along with you, worked on recommended changes. Um, I know we provided those changes to you guys, but then also um, Barb had recommended go through what we made copies of downstairs to kind of look at what planning has already started to recommend and changes. And I, I actually don't have that. I did not attend. I could not attend the last meeting. Uh, it was from the meeting. It was from the July meeting. Okay. okay. Oh. 
So do you have a list of the recommend the recommended changes that have been made from the group and from the uh I have on the file back at the office. Okay. So I can provide that. Okay. Yeah. So but I just wanted to make sure that from those copies if everybody had a chance to bring to them and kind of see if there was anything that they would add. Because while they're going through it, now is the time that anyone who voices her, now is the time to do it. I think it would be a good idea to take some time to study it because the requirements for PTAC are minimal. I mean, it's not a big part of the ordinance, but one thing that was never answered is the, the, um, the account for tree money, right? That was never answered. Uh, the ordinance says that there is a tree fund, but where who, who manages it? Where is it? Is it part of the budget of the Yes. Because the current ordinance reads that we make recommendations for the spending of that money. For the maintenance of the trees in the community group. And one of the things I know that we're going to talk about is pre work to some trees that are in bad way to have issues that are bad. You know, so, yeah, and the magnolias too. And, and that's been ongoing for years. And I was going to ask you about that. That's been ongoing for. Years. Yeah, so the last meeting, they just started their treatment, but... Um, the tree bid? No, so oh. Hartley came in and they did the um, soil limits within the hope, oh, and then I believe they're going to wait until spring to then do them with the which was in the quote. They ask me and look at it. Um, I've been in talk with me see if we want to follow through and wait for that to take place or if one of the tree initiatives or maybe Arbor Day, something where we look at maybe replacing those. Okay, um, do you know what we're talking about? Which trees we're talking about? Sorry. Yeah, we're talking about the side street over here and Hemeda Street and Magnolias that are planted in the median. And the sidewalk and the street, okay. some of which are dead. And they they just really haven't done well. So on the PD side, there is irrigation. Obviously, the street. Is it the first block from boundary, or they keep going down below? Yeah, it's the first block, I believe, the first two that are really noticeable is as soon as you turn on come middle of the boundary. It should be the last two on the right hand side before you get to the big line over the corner. I've right. probably been by them a hundred times. Yeah. hundred million times yeah. on a bicycle. Right. So I recently installed a few oaks and uh, magnolias in a community here. When I did that, I had to put 45 gallons of water on it. Per tree twice a week for about two months. They're still alive. They drive through silicons, but they're still alive. But it is, they take so much water. water yeah. Even if it's a magnolia or um, you know, a small like ten oak or whatever, they just they take so much water, especially getting started. Like yeah. um, because they're in the medium. It well, it, so their microclimate and stuff like that being in the median doesn't help because it adds stress to the tree. The so heat from the, the heat. blacktop, yeah. the exhaust from vehicles, the lack of an irrigation system kicking on at all that can that can lead to a decline in trees and streetscapes yeah. very quickly. Yeah. So, because they're getting heat from the asphalt, they're getting heat from concrete. Sun. It seems that that was not a good choice. It's hard because there's very 
I would say that there are a few. There are select trees in our zone that I would consider small island trees, like little mini trees. The ones like so on Boundary Street. I mean, for the most part, those trees are doing really well. Yes. I mean, what was the protocol when you installed those? On Boundary Street, so I believe those are cathedral oaks. Uh, they all came with heater bags, and I believe it was before me, but I believe a former supervisor told me that they were sure under a year and come get a came in. I believe. Like most trees for the first two weeks you water and then you start cutting back and then you know really a tree doesn't really establish itself until about three to five years and then it's becoming self you know what I mean so the first three to five years of a, tree, a newly trained uh, planted tree is crucial to its health so I think that the cathedral oaks one once they got established they're good but Newly planted ones, it's kind of hard to do the same thing because one, we don't like using the gator bags. Yeah, I don't either. Uh, we much rather build a little island around and water in by the way so that the ball gets the water that it needs. And it's not like you guys have time to just ride around with a water buffalo, you know, and sit there for 20 we, minutes per tree. We try to, like, as much as we can, we have a large water schedule. Right. No. So we have very um, few. Flower beds are actually under irrigation. I would say about 65 to 70 percent of our flower beds are without irrigation. It's been so dry. So dry. When was the last time we had rain? It's been like three it's weeks, almost a month. Yeah. yeah. And we didn't get much rain. I will no, say the best trees that we have planted in the island is that we have spirits called the Michael Murphy on Prince Street, was the Allium. So we took a slight cold water with the Chinese elm. The alley elm there, within a year, probably grew almost two feet larger than the trees that were planted there for 15 years. Wow. Well, and they're, yeah. they're thriving. So if you go Bladen Street and you make the right on the prints, all those trees there placed about two years ago. And they're wow. thriving. And that, Michael Murphy told me that those are one of the best small island trees. And if you're going to put any tree in a small, and there's only probably a, you know, three foot, two or two and a half foot space between the laundry and room. And the root system is that invasive. So it's it's a perfect tree for the streetscape, but it's also one of the trees that, and you have to look at it, trees in an urban setting don't grow to their full potential. So the allium may grow to like 55, 65 feet out in perfect conditions, but in there, maybe you're looking at a 35 foot tree. But you have to look here too, like are the utilities there. Do we really want to put a tree there? Then eventually Dominion is going to come in and hang it. You know? So we really have to look at it. And maybe that's something, you know, we can put on the agenda that maybe that is something that we want to focus on for our day. I, I think that's something that should be focused on. Yeah. You know, simply are we spinning wheels Turning around and, and replanting the magnolias, you know, when that's not a good choice. Yeah. You don't want to do the same thing over and over again. Right. Yeah. And waste money. Yeah. Something to look at. I mean, and, and too, you know, would it, would it be beneficial if you did decide, hey, I, want, I do want to plant this elm or you know, a little, um, little gem, subbing out to have somebody water it? Is it worth it dollar wise? Yeah. Um, because I mean, if you did it that way, it would work, but that's expensive. You know, I, you're looking at probably, from my experience, six to eight thousand dollars yeah. to keep that going for two months. Yeah. Wow. So I do remember we talked about a reporting system or like a, a study done yearly. Yeah. Or a report like that. And I can't remember. I think we were talking about we wanted that to be something that was put in place or asking if there was something like that put in place, but then go through and assess or assess. I think it was like that. Yeah. So it, it was along the lines of what we were talking about, like an earth portion. Right. That's and yeah. how it changes. So the, tree oh, the, state, can yeah, the canopy. 
from 15, 20 years ago is not the same as it is today. Sure. With new developments, hurricanes that come through annually, um, it's a good thing to kind of know where we're at. And I think that's something where the city has to decide in which direction they like to go. They do want to get an urban forestry plan. Um, it all starts with that information because the tree can't be assessed, but we'll tell you where you're at. And you start picking your goals. How much tree canopy do you want? How much development area do you can? Each city differs from it. Um, but I do think that having one, the tree canopy assessment, and also um, the tree inventory, which was done probably 18 years ago. Last tree inventory. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I think having something like that, or maybe annually or biannually, something goes out, whether it be contracted out or whether it's in-house, that goes to the end of checks, inventory is still the thing, what was added. For us, when it comes to the tree initiative, we have our records of tree work just because for us on our property, we do 95% of the tree work. It's very rarely now that we go out and contract tree service. It's usually, it has to be a liability. So if it's a tree that's on it right away, but there's a house right next to it, we will contract it out. But if it's in one of our city parks or if it's on the right away and there's no obstructions, there's no real liability, we do it all in house. So, for us, we have a good system of what we planned, what we removed, what we grew, and how much we did. That helps us one with the tree city stay information out of here. But also helps me know, hey, you know, three years ago I planted this tree over here right here. You know, I don't really have that much room left in that part. Because when this canopy hopefully grows in the next 15, 20 years, I don't want another tree competing with space. So, you know, so I, I know that I operate on a smaller scale with this, what we're talking about, but I do know that some of the local tree companies, if I call them and I tell them, take a ride through this HOA and give me an assessment, they won't charge me for it. I know I'm on a smaller scale, but you know, I wonder if like some of the local companies would be willing to ride through certain sections of the streets, give us an assessment, maybe split it up, you know, like this month, you know, one week one, you can drive through a good section, you know, whatever, and maybe see if there's multiple tree companies, arborists companies that would be willing to possibly do that. Yeah. Obviously, they want, you know, an, you know, an intent to do some work, yeah. but sure. it would at least get you out the reach and take it off the city's plate. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure they'd like to the visit out there working next to you. Right. Hermitage Road tree work. So, are this is the same thing we spoke about? That this is John Fontana. Yes. So there are two oak trees, right? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. They're on either side of the rail trail on Hermitage. And they're, there's something wrong with them. They're dropping leaves. They're sizable oaks. They've been in, I don't even know how many years they've been in. A long time. A long time. You know, they're sizable oaks and they're just, um, they're struggling. So they, um, Michael Murphy had recommended that it's probably best to do a color excavation. And this is pretty much to give you the information. If you are in agreement with it, the board would approve We can bring it before the city manager for approval funding. So back to you know those magic words, fine funding. Yes. That's where we should have had, or we should have, a tree fund that doesn't seem to exist. And I know I keep pressing this, but 
Darn it, we should have a treatment. We should, where we don't have to go looking for the money to maintain, you know, these valuable assets. Um, do you have any idea how much a root color excavation runs? I, I know it's probably different for every tree, but I, I'm just in trying to get a feel for it. I was speaking with Bartlett yesterday, yeah. and she, you know, she could not tell me, uh, Derek is out of town until Tuesday, and she did not. Know. I'm sure it depends on the caliper tree. So obviously those are very large oak trees. So the root color excavation of that is probably going to be a very large amount of that area. So I'm assuming price-wise, I would probably say it's find the ballpark here would be anywhere between five to ten grand. Per tree. I think. Wow. Okay. I never suspected it would be that because much. You're taking, That's a lot. You're taking a uh, bunch of air pressure washer, you're taking an air jet bag, and you are exposing the entire root right. collar, root system, everything of that tree. So that is how our risk make their assessments of if there's any underlying diseases in the roots, mm -hmm. um, if there's any damages after construction. Um, it just depends on what you're looking for what symptoms the trees are showing, and then you kind of make your diagnosis there. You can make direct uh, soil limits while you're there, fertilization. So it's a very tasking um, job from what I saw. But it's like the arborist course mm -hmm. is a very tasking job. So I would assume labor-wise, it's extremely intense. I would assume that the price could be pretty high. Wow. But we will know truly until Sense. We get it. So right now, it's price-wise, it's not really something we would have to worry about right now. It would be, is this something the group would like to look into? And then we can say, okay, can we bring it to the matter? Do we have approval to go be in quotes? We'll look at what the price line is going to be. And contact part of it, contact other companies. Uh, per city guidelines, depending on money amount. Depends on how many different vendors we'll have to get quotes from. And how then, many, who would you get quotes from? Bartlett. Well, I, mean, I would probably lean on Michael Murphy to point us in that direction of who they would trust. One, they're live oaks. So mm -hmm. I don't want just anybody doing that. I would want to know whoever's doing it is professional and knows what they're doing. I know he made the recommendation of Bartlett. That's one. Obviously, we would need multiple companies. So if there's other companies that may be part of the recommended or you recommended, we would still have to get quotes, depending on what the cost might be. And depending on the cost, will depend on how many quotes. At that level of work, I would say, I would ask him his thoughts on Harbor Nature. Possibly. Where are they at? Uh, I believe they're in. I know that they're up in the Hilton Head, Hardyville, Bluffton area, but they also come down to the curve times. And a lot of the um, commercial landscapers here utilize them for things with trees. Um, you know, I I enjoy using a tree, but I don't know if that's in their wheelhouse or not. Yeah. Is there anywhere near us where they've done this that it's been successful that they did? That I've known we've never had anything done in the city like that. Okay, I don't know. I can't remember. I'd be curious to know if there's other like cities, neighboring cities that may have had this done at some point in time, and if it was successful, if it, yeah. they could tell us it was worth the money. Or I could also probably contact the state forestry commission and see if there is anybody that they recommend. Um, there, there's a bunch of wonderful minds there so do you know who the contact person for the city of savannah is or the city of charleston is it might be interesting to contact them and ask them if they've done anything i feel like charleston especially would have done that charleston never has to in some areas i wonder what lies this on the board you know she was in direct contact with 
Especially scale. Yeah. Uh, Can I keep this? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right. So, are we? Are we gonna? I, I'd like to. Yeah, I'd like to pursue this. So, is there a motion to pursue the steps needed to get a root collar excavation? Yeah, uh, I'll second. Uh, is it alone? You know, whatever the cost, the risk. I mean, uh, it's going to be expensive. I'd like to see the the tree that's on the western side of the rail trail um, address first, because I think I'll that, that, show it. I think that's the the tree that was the okay. worst. So I don't know if it means anything, but. Now, a neighbor approached me and said, This is going to, you know, this has a cost on, I'll pay up to a thousand dollars. Which I thought was, you know, very generous. But I think it definitely does. So, proceed. All right. Public comment. Business. So new business, I would like to address, Joe Mack, your question of the nature trail on the bluff. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is I'm going to pretty much have you take the floor and tell us about it. I'm going to write down the details and then see if that something in our purview that we can do. Okay. Yeah. So I get, it's basically just a recommendation for the feasibility of a nature trail of the bluff. From where to where? So the location is between roughly Haymar Street and uh, Newcastle, and then the other direction will be between Bay Street and the Butte River. Newcastle, you said? That's right. Okay. Yeah, so it, it's, it's, it's just a feasibility, it's just pre preliminary idea, you know, and uh, it's an it's a, be a natural loop, loop trail, one mile in length. And you're talking of going from the top of the bluff down to the bottom where the water line is? So the two ends of the loop, you know, it's like an oval uh, eclipse or whatever you call it, um, would be come around where the swing is. If, if, if you ever want to find out if anybody's been to the bluff, ask them if they know where the swing is. Yeah. They say yes, they, they, then they spent some time there. If they, if they don't know where the swing is, they haven't spent much time there. So you could you either go down that hill or come up that steep hill with the swing, and then the other end would be uh, the, you circle around the third tree past the art bench. It's a very colorful art bench. It's the third tree closer to the marina side. That's right, very close to it, and it's the third tr third tree past the uh, bench. So you're on you're on top of the bluff. Well, it 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 has a variety of elevations. Um, well, no, it'd be two different. It's two different levels to, to put it in a to simplify it. You have the upper level and then you have the lower level. They're both uh, they're both with the tree line. Have you walked the lower level? Yeah, I've, I've walked it, jogged it, biked it. Yep. Taking a bike down there, like what? Like you went down where the sea the sea wall is at. Yeah, I've actually jogged on on the seawall and biked on the seawall. I, I try not to do it at, at a High length of time, you might end up in the fluff mud. Um, <laughs> yeah. And there's oysters in there too. Yeah, and the oysters. <laughs> Play at your own risk, as they say. Okay. Um, so how much, how much maintenance, how much, how much fill would, would be needed to establish a trail along there? Well, that's that's for the I don't know about fill, but that's for the professional trail builders. I, I've I couldn't, I couldn't really say I built a trail. I mean, I cleared it. I sort of cleared a trail, um, and that was one. So these people build hundreds of them. They, they are experts. Um, they would, uh, they might be lining up salivating over this to put their name on this. Who knows? But, you know, it's, 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 an, it's an iconic piece of property. It's a, it's a natural fit, if you ask me. Um, uh, um, there's something like, you know, 50 magnificent trees and I actually counted them, and then there's 80. On top of the bluff. From, from end to end, on that, 
from east to west, east to west, there's there's fifty, you know, not fifty non palmetto trees, and then there's eighty palmetto trees um, that I counted. Um, I forget the actual numbers, but it was fifty something, eight something, and then uh, it, it, it's a variety of you know, there's dirt, there's you know, it's not it's not the eighteenth grain in Harbor Town. It, it's not that kind of grass. There's there's dirt sections from um, just being dirt, and then there's where pedestrians walk closer to uh, Newcastle. There's you know the, the pedestrians sometimes walk on that side, even though there's a sidewalk on the other side of the road. Um, and on the lower section, there's actually two small sections where it looks like a, a natural trail. That that would that would be for you know it's not. How should I describe? Oh, you describe it like. You can see it's a trail. See the rest of it, you can't really see it's a trail, though it, though it's 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 a, it's able to be accessed by foot, jogging, biking. I I had yeah, I had to go down there been many there, times. Been there many times. <laughs> when I when I worked with the green area and I was part of our area that we maintained and um from a maintenance side aspect, it was pretty rough, it was pretty tough. Um, it was very time consuming. Um, you had to definitely watch your footing in a lot of areas, a lot of roofs in that area. And you know, if you're talking about filter and raising anything, I guess my, my concern wouldn't necessarily be could you get the filter in there? My concern would be how would you keep it without it washing away? Eroding. Eroding after a high tide or something like that when the water goes up, like how would you keep that area leveled out and not washed over that seawall off into the marsh? So yeah, the seawall, it, it's a very small section of it. It, it. it probably disappears after, I think somewhere west of uh, Harrington maybe, right around the city of Harrington, I think was it, my memory. And then, there's one one spot really where it just gets a little damp from a high tide, and there there's plenty of thick grass in that area, which um, is probably is probably based on the on intent for the drainage. Who knows? Um, and it's it, it, there is some widths down there, really wide on the lower level. Um, as I think in the 30s there was a road. There used to be a road down there. Um, that whole thing was grown, wasn't it? So. That wasn't even that wasn't even a thing back in the day. Yeah. Like I remember talking to somebody about that. I think the grasses are there for erosion control. Uh, you're talking about after the seawall, all the grasses. Well, the the, the thick grass is, is mostly on the uh, west side of the on the lower level, and then yeah, there's um. Not a whole lot of roots on the lower level. Most most bluffs, erosion control is about a fifty foot buffer of vegetation needed to help control. It's the same thing farmland bluff, that bluff. It's it's just you know king tide, high tide, like that. If there's no vegetation there to help soak up the water. Just going to keep washing away. Um, at the park right now, we have the issue where it's just staying like that. And a good percentage of the park in the last five years washed the water. So we had one of them slither in the back to make sure it didn't go back side. But eventually, in a couple of years, that's going to also be tracked. So I know right now they're working on it. Besides, we're going to have to leave the capital for the projects. I got one of those things. It's, it's being monitored and they're having the professionals come. Kind of What's your next step? What is the next step? This well, is the this is the idea. Well, a lot of you know the, the main crux is uh, crux of it is the, the professional trail builder. I could I couldn't get one here, and you know they want to they want more buy in first from the whoever owns it. To come and, and then come in and say, you know, give their analysis of it. Have you looked into who owns the property? Yeah, the city of Buford owns it. Oh, okay. Well, it's a mixture. 
So the city owns, I think the city has from the marina to the middle slope and then the other side of the slope from that to where the residential housing is. That's all open land trust. But then you also have to understand too, I don't want to find out that the state. So it's three separate entities. So yeah, it doesn't touch the, the one mile loop does not touch the open land trust property, does not go on there. Uh, so yeah, the city never did anything with it except for what what I can visualize and see is is just you know big pipes sticking out of the ground sideways for the drainage and stuff. Um probably plants and grass and that types that types of stuff, but never it pretty much was left alone, I think, as far as recreation. How do you expect for this to be paid for? You were talking about grants. So there's a, yeah, they, they would love to give a grant like this um, and on a piece of property like that. And like I say, it's just, this is all about the feasibility at this stage. Um, but there is a $100,000 grant and then we, we spend 25000 So it would be a $125,000 project. And that would come from the state, uh, state R, R, RTP grant and I, I pre-applied to that just to get my feet wet and get my name, get the trail in the running for that. And um, the guy's real helpful. Um, of course, he that's what he does. He wants to see tra trails come to fruition. Um, he's a huge help, easy to talk to, love people like that. Um, and uh, I believe the, you know, the, the maintenance of it, there's plenty of people in town, you know, some have kids, some don't, would love to volunteer and do free maintenance. Um, and as a matter of fact, when, when Hurricane Helene came through many, many areas, um, you know, they had trails, you know, everything got messed up. Well, the trails were included in getting messed up. And so, and a lot of the, um, I wouldn't say a lot of, but there was plenty of, uh, volunteers that went out there and helped clear it, um, and, and uh, cleared up the trees and, and they do it on a on a normal day when there's no storms. You know, if a tree falls over on a normal day and not wet in the storm, or just it's time for it to go, they somebody goes out there with chainsaw volunteers and they take care of it. Um, but but yeah, so um, I mean, it's early in the in the thing of this. Uh, but I mean, if, I mean, I could I could make a motion if you don't if nobody wants to second it, that's fine. And um, I mean, this, uh, but um, yeah. So who would who would make? maintain that let's say you had a storm like a portion of the lane come through and there was limbs down and everything like that would that be the city and if you get the greenery so it'd be a big part of it would probably be city but then also the greenery that that is their contract area whoever wants a contract that is their contract area but then contracts um storm cleanup tree cleanup is included um, yeah. for the most part in those areas, we drive by like in the streetscapes to help. But the greenery does hold their own with picking up the debris and and all of that. Mm -hmm. the So it, it just depends. If it's a large tree, it's probably us. Right. Um, anytime a tree has gone down, we had one that fell across the loop there. Um, the slope goes down, and the city had to take care of that. And that was large trees. About two days to come up. It just depends on the severity of the tree that comes down. If it's a palm tree, usually sometimes contractors they can take care of it. Big deal. But on a larger scale, it's probably going to be us. Just so the, so the I mean, because I was just wondering, like maintenance. Why you said volunteers and stuff? So if it was big stuff, then it would be taken care of volunteer wise. You're just saying just. On a weekly or bi-weekly basis, there'd be people that would be willing to come out and just make sure that the area is cleaned off overall. Or yeah, so uh, you know, one one time I was riding, I did last time I was there, I did uh, ten laps on my bicycle, and then on the fifth lap, I went under the tree close to Harrington, went under the tree limb where it's almost where it pretty much touches the ground. And then when I went up, when I go under it, I, you know, I do the same line pretty much. The, um, the Spanish moss was covering up the good sized log, the size of your leg. And I hit it and I took a spill. And I went down so gracefully, thank God. And then uh, 
not the first time I've fallen on a bicycle on a, on a trail, but it, it's, um, I said, oh, blame the caretaker. That would be me. Cause you know, I, I was joking with myself, but I, I was out there by myself, but I, I have done very light, light maintenance out there. I mean, just picking up stuff and throwing it. I, it, it, you know, as far as time wise, but, um, uh, the, um, the guy's name in Columbia is Neil Hamilton. He's a, he's a great help in charge of the trails grants. And he had mentioned to me that some trails that get built, it actually improves the drainage. Now, obviously that's not gonna fit for every piece of land, but that's that's what he told me. Um, I'm not an expert in drainage. Uh, I can use a rake and I can pick up stuff and I, 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 can, I can certainly help there. We, we built a trail, uh, uh, just short of two miles south of here um, on a tiny island on the rail trail. And we built the trail and connected it to a dead end trail. So then it, then it became a loop. It's a very small piece of land, um, might, but there's there's room for more trails there. Um, but it's, it, it's, it's much smaller than, than this property here we're talking about. The drainage really wouldn't be an issue that for this area. Thing because I mean, it's gonna run off. It, it depends where the outfall pipes are, uh, where they run through, where the trail would run through with them, how the excavation leveling it, it depends. So, the experts would probably know more of speeds going on or how drainage would be affected or not. It just depends really the scale of it. But I do know. Um, I don't, I think three, two or three major outfalls. Two on the slope to the side, and then one on the Would it be required? If you put something like this in, I'm sure that the between the state and the city, there would be certain requirements, yeah. things that would have to be put in place. So you also got to take in their account those costs yeah. and getting those licenses. Outfalls meaning drainage pipes. Okay. Yeah, and that's true. why that's gonna get complicated. I like that. Don't you? When you're when you're dealing with utilities. Well it, it and even the possibility in, in terms of you know, I'm being maybe a devil's advocate in terms of having to question mark relocate. Yeah. He's, Drainage pipes to establish the trail. That would be a huge expense. If it gets approved, I mean, it's 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 functional the way it is now to ride it, and you can walk your dog. It, you know, it's for, as as uh, Henry Henry Chambers said, it, you know, the waterfront park is for everyone. This this trail would be for everyone. And so, you know, whether you're walking your dog or you want to run or ride a bike. Um, I, I don't, I, I think it has to do with will. If, if, if people want it, they will, and we, we have, I mean, the recreation around here has been um, questionable over the years and, and what, what is developed and what is not. But we, we have the 25 grand. We wouldn't want, we don't, we were not asking the city to spend a penny. So we wouldn't have to lift a finger. I mean, probably would have to do a little bit. Um, how, much, how much that little bit turns into, whether it's a little bit more, you know, I don't know. So, some of this is, uh, you know, some of this I can figure out, some of this I can't. That's where the experts experts do what they do. Um, but like I say, it's functional the way it is now. They're, they're, I will say at the, on the lower level, maybe towards the middle, it's it's off camber. So it's, it, that's, that's probably not gonna be as, as, a, as enjoyable loop the way it is now. I can ride it. Um, you know, you get, you get, you certainly, Get slowed down by thick grass on a bicycle, and you have you have different textures. Basically, is what's going on the way it is now. Um, that's pretty much it. yeah. Um, have you ever noticed any? Um, I know that sometimes there'll be squatters and stuff that will camp out along that side. I know. Have you ever seen that before? I know I've removed bicycles. Shopping parts and clothing items <laughs> from the bluff. Um, so I guess, like from a safety perspective, 
The other thing think? that I see it from maintenance standpoint is one, we have to maintain the vegetation there is the amount of machinery that we would have to put down there to maintain it. And would that affect the travel each time? So that's that's my question. Well, when you take that arm and you're going through and ripping it out, I mean, you're pulling you're pull, pulling layers, layers of dirt whether you need to or not. You know? Um, and then just safety wise. Yeah, how elaborate the trail. Yeah, I don't know what goes into making it sort of, you know, the same width going all the way around or, and then, uh, um, the same, same texture. So that would, that would be interesting. Um, the professional trail builder, like I said, I've never had someone go, go look at it. There was a, a you know, uh, some guy that's built a hundred trails. Um, and, and I've only seen one guy down there. He was sleeping on the art bench. Um, and that was once. And I've been down there, I don't know how many times. Um, so I, I, as they, you know, they said the Spanish Moss Trail was going to, oh, this, oh, the people were against it. You know, there's all this crime. And, um, well, yeah, I, I, I've never seen anything on the rail trail either. Um, I mean, Buford is is a small town. It's not you know it's not San Francisco homeless, but it's it's um we have our moments. The population has gone way up, and uh, but um I know if you build it, they will come. So that would be the talk of the trail world for sure. Um, and that people want trails, so they even developers are putting trails through the woods because that's what people want and and. Uh, as they say, get away from it. So, uh, again, you, you, you bring up some good points. Well, I can take all this. Um, I'll meet with Nate. Um, they can tell you first thing in the morning, talk about it, and then we can start looking into how we would navigate this, if we can navigate it. Um, we'd have to look into it to make sure that there is any agreements that are in place with Open Land Trust. Um, or with the city view for or with um, Bluff itself, with the road control board. You know, there, there are certain places like um, that we have agreements in place that maybe we're not supposed to build this here, we're not supposed to do this here because of that safety has or because we want erosion control, especially Bellamy's current need. Um, had to go in there and probably spend three weeks. Is Buford uh, Jasper involved in this too? Along the road? It depends. So it depends on whose utilities they are going through. Um, but if it's sewage, I don't know if they'll really be City Buford or if it'd be a combination of City Buford and Buford Jasper. It just depends. I want to take this information and run it through game so that we can then run it through the appropriate people here to see if there's anything that we can find, see if it's feasible or if there's anything that's going to be back in the future. So yeah, I would I would just say, Adam, if, if if you said I could go build a trail there, I mean if I if I was on my, my budget, I'm usually on a budget, I just four man's way, I just take a shovel, yeah. get 10 people. Hey, you think the line should go here, here? We wouldn't go too deep. We could. We, the only thing that I'm, be, I'm being real, real hypothetical. Yeah. And the only thing that was anything on city property becomes liability for us. So if you build the trail on our property and somebody gets hurt, you're not the one that gets in trouble. I mean, I, I have heard some no's on this issue. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, you're going to mess up the view shed. Oh, you're going to tear up the bluff. Well, you put in the trail. What do you mean tear up the bluff? I mean, they, they said, I'm not a big fan of e bikes. I sell them. They said e-bikes were going to tear up the trail where where the normal bike bicycles go. It, it doesn't really doesn't really work that way. Um, there's responsible people and responsible riders. I mean, people litter. I mean, you know, I I don't I don't see anything at this point that says it can't be done. Though you you guys have brought up some strong points to consider for sure. Um, I appreciate the feedback. Um, you also got to take into consideration, not to interrupt you, but you also got to no, take into good. consideration that 
professional riders and experienced riders are not the only people that will be on that trail. And while they would know what to do, a kid or an elderly person that might want to walk or whatever the case or is, bike. or ride a bike for the first time, you know, um, you also have to take, take into account that aspect. The safety aspect? Safety yeah. is everything. A good safe way is, um, and it's, it's, it's more common than uncommon, that pedestrians go a certain direction around the loop and then the bicyclists go the other way. So you meet them head on instead of scaring them on their backside. And in a perfect world, I 100% agree with you, but people are really bad about following directions. Especially. And that, and they, they actually do it like, you know, the odd date, you go the, you go this way, and then the even date, you go the other way, and vice versa. It's, it's, I mean, in many ways, it's skin to cat. I mean, that'll never. Um, I mean, you're not with, not with the public. I mean, they've had an accident on the rail trail. So sure. bikers. Look, look, I was going to say, look how, I was just thinking about this. Look how wide the rail trail is. So how wide would this trail have to be, you know, for people to pass? How well, wide did you have it in mind? Well, it, a, a single track trail is, is, you know, it's a natural trail. There's no pain that we're talking about. It'd be, it'd be four feet at the most. They're typically two to four feet. Um, so yeah, some, some bicyclists went around where the, where the, Spanish Moss Trail deviated from the railroad tracks and then took a hard 90 degree turn. There was some people hogging the whole trail and they went around this blind turn and they ran somebody up into a fence and they got banged up. Yeah. They were, yeah. Interesting, yeah. yeah. But, but on the flip side of this too, I can imagine that the city of Buford is going to, for a two to four foot wide trail along the bluff that's open to the public. I, I don't know how well received that would be. I'm not, you know, trying to be negative about it. I'm just, I don't know. I've, uh, you know, I, what what's the downside? I mean, if you put a trail there, what's the downside? You build it, they come, and they, it's healthy. I mean, it, che it checks all the boxes. It's healthy. Well, I think uh, one. We wouldn't know the negatives really until we spoke to the professionals and like the environmentalists, uh, you know, say all that stuff, road control experts, they would tell us the negatives. Uh, and I'm not saying I won't speak what the job. negatives are because right. we don't know until they would say, you know, if you do this here with this width, this angle, this could be the problems you run into. Um, so all that, you know, would take place if this was pushed forward by the city. So obviously it'd be contracting out. Any work within the city, if it's project-wise, it's done, it would always be contracted out. Just so liability-wise, insurance-wise, we would know that everything was crossed with a piece of case. Sure. Everything was done to the best safety standards possible. Um, so we don't really know. We could say hearsay of like what Impose it, but we really truly wouldn't know until the experts kind of came in and said, well, Yes, well said. I mean, I can just read this. This is what I have, I have written. The Parks and Trees Advisory Commission recommends that City Council for the City of Beaufort begin the feasibility of a one mile loop nature trail to bluff a green space. That, and that was short and sweet. Like I said, I have no problem. I will take this information from Nate and then they can start moving up the chain and see how we move forward. Okay. Is that it? I, I don't know if I should make this motion what I just read, but I mean if y'all want to you need a motion for it. This is this There's is nothing to we don't have enough information right now okay. to because all it's gonna be is we have to do our homework. So now I would have to lay out the facts in front of you and then you can make a motion to build for How much time do you need to do all that? It depends. It, 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 you would have to one C we can get in contact with um, what information we can gather. Um, also we need to see what agreements are in place with the city for open land trust, all that. Um, 
we have to look into the detail because we can't just say we do this and then all of a sudden we start getting progress. And somebody goes, no, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, you guys signed this agreement. So, so, so we're not building anything. So we, we have to cross the P's and Q's before doing any of that. So I'm taking this information to the date say, hey, this is what we're looking at. You take this information and start running into the chain. Start talking to the start talking to the city. All this space flow that's there's no Sure. Excellent. Yeah, I mean, this doesn't, if we, if I was miraculously to pass this, I mean, if it doesn't, you know, how will take a while. It's all good. Well, what I'm saying is, is that you, you, you well spoken. It is that I think let's gather information um, because information is what's going to help shift forward in our Sure. So I um, would think allow me some time to take this debate and allow him some time to get the people who will know the answers because me and Dave were not. Um, most of the stuff gets contracted out. Um, so allow us some time to take this information and let's see how we can work with it. Okay. Anybody else have any new business? Any new okay. business? Yeah. All right. Then our meeting is adjourned. Good, good, good point. Oh, I invite y'all to go down there and check.